Buongiorno and welcome to my Italy 2022 travel vlog. We've got Venice Film Festival excitement. We've got fabulous vegan restaurants in Venice and Padua, cruelty-free makeup and skincare recommendations, a little bit of fashion and jewelry, and we've got the most sublime visual art in venerable old museums and temporary gallery spaces and on the street. This is probably going to be the longest video in this series, so pour yourself a cup of your favorite beverage and settle in. At first, I didn't think I was going to Venice, which I was fine with because after all, I am an introvert who is currently waist deep in drafting a 900 page time travel novel. But then I got a phone call from Dave the week before saying, you're coming, talk to my travel agent. So I went into frenzied shopping mode, got dresses and undergarments, Big thanks to the sales folks at Nordstrom at Tyson's Corner. I redid my manic panic so my hair wouldn't clash with my dress. And then Dave's travel agent, shout out to you, Kim, arranged for a long layover in New York so I could pick up the rest of what I needed and get a very fun makeup tutorial with Kevin at Credo Beauty. Credo is similar to Sephora, except all of their products are cruelty-free, so you don't have to ask if this or that brand tests on animals. You just know that they don't. And I have to say, I take much better care of my skin now that I've had the benefit of their excellent customer service. So thank you for helping me with the skincare stuff, Vivi, and thank you, Kevin, for the awesome makeup tutorial. Flying first class on Delta, thank you, Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Seriously though, I wish we lived in a world where every single passenger on any given long haul flight gets to sleep horizontally and arrive refreshed. Owing to recent attempted fraudulent activity, I did not have an ATM card and would not be getting a replacement in time. So Dave spotted me a wad of euros that lasted me for my whole trip. So thank you again, Dave, you are the best. So before we get into all of the film festival excitement, I wanna tell you about my first trip to Venice as a junior in high school back in June of 1998. I was there on a nine day trip with my Latin class. It was the last day of the trip. None of my classmates wanted me on their gondola, so I ended up riding with the teachers and feeling like a total loser. I had used up all my traveler's checks, so I barely had enough for one cold drink on a hot afternoon. And so I vividly remember standing right about here, looking around and thinking, this is beautiful and I really wanna go home. 25 years and millions of words later, I am back here attending the international premiere of a celebrated film adaptation of one of my novels. And I gotta tell you, that was pretty much the most satisfying feeling I have ever had in my life. Quick clarification, I did have friends in high school, it was just that none of them were on that trip. I would offer you photographic evidence, but it's all in my mom's basement at the moment, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Also, you may be wondering, Camille, how did you spend your $200 in traveler's checks? Well, <laughs> I purchased this bracelet from a jeweler in Florence. It was $80. It was too much. However, I'm still wearing it 25 years later. So was it such a frivolous purchase? I don't think so. Okay, back to present day Venice. We were staying at the St. Regis, which is needless to say, the ritziest hotel I have ever stayed in. Yummy, fruity, alcoholic welcome beverage, vegan snacks, especially for me. And I picked up a pizza with vegan sausage and mozzarella from a chain pizzeria called Rosso Pomodoro, and it was perfect. You think pizza is good? And then you go back to Italy and you're like, no, this, this is pizza. Oh, and let me show you what I packed for snacks. A trip to Trader Joe's the day before a big trip means I will always have something to eat, which is not really an issue in a big city, but it sure comes in handy when you're in a small town or a village and restaurant pickings are slim, even for omnivores. My 30 pound bag of snacks saved us on a trip to Turkey during Ramadan, <laughs> along with this watermelon, which may or may not have tumbled off of this truck. Snack bag aside, you are not going to see me eating much these next couple of days because when I get excited, not nervous, just like really hyped up because there's so much awesome stuff happening, my stomach like just isn't having it. And so I force myself to eat some nuts, a little bit of dried fruit here and there so that I don't faint. That did happen to me once. I'm not gonna tell you about it. It was the most embarrassing moment of my entire life. I do not want that to happen again. So I make myself eat at least a handful of nuts. 
Anyway, that first night I went to a cocktail party with Teresa and some of the other producers to celebrate the unveiling of the film poster with art by Elizabeth Payton. Teresa and I took a photo with Luca, but I still haven't seen it. It's probably going to stay on someone's camera roll forever. Sorry. Dave was meant to arrive at the same time, but something came up, so he ended up arriving the next day. Back at the hotel, I polished off my vegan pizza and indulged in a couple of glasses of peach bellini in bed, feeling very decadent. You can judge me, I don't mind. The next day, there was nothing on the schedule before dinner time, so I had a very good lunch at a restaurant called La Tecia Vegana down a quiet side street, about a 25 minute walk from the hotel. I ordered the gazpacho and eggplant faux parm and finished with a soy cappuccino. So much clever street art. This one is mean, but very likely true. Sorry. Then it was time for a visit to the Gallery dell'Accademia, which is the city's museum of pre 19th century art. I studied Renaissance art at La Pietra, which is the NYU campus in Florence, all the way back in 2002, so this is definitely my jam. Here I am, none too convincingly, reenacting the Pietà with my dear friend Aravinda. This was my first time back in Italy as a vegan, and I noticed things I would have passed right by before, like this Paolo Cagliari painting of Jesus about to eat a bird for dinner. The feast in the house of Levi reminded me of a book I read almost a decade ago now called The Lost Religion of Jesus by Keith Akers, which I highly recommend along with Rin Berry's Food for the Gods. The educated speculation here is that Jesus had very close ties with ascetic vegetarian communities like the Essenes and that he was one of them, that animal sacrifice is actually part of what he was protesting at the temple, but through a whole lot of ideologizing in the early church and a series of possibly purposeful mistranslations, we are left with the notion that Jesus himself put a humans only limit around the golden rule, which makes less and less sense the more you think about it, right? I've written quite a detailed essay about this on my blog, so check that out if you are interested. The link is below. And then I wandered into the Anish Kapoor exhibit, which, good God, this felt like walking into the aftermath of my own novel. Eerie timing, huh? And then it was back to the hotel to get ready for the evening. That night, MGM was hosting a really fun party at the Monastery of San Nicolo with a string quartet playing renditions of 80s pop music, and that was really fun. We had an all-vegetarian meal by Luca's friend Nico Romito, who is a chef with three Michelin stars, if I'm not mistaken. I finally got to meet Timothy, and he gave me a big hug. And when I remember that moment, I just think of sequins, a multitude <laughs> of sequins. I also got to connect with several of the publicity and marketing folks I'd only ever emailed with and of course hang out with Teresa and Dave and Teresa's bestie Bernadette. The next day was the press conference and Timothy gave me a shout out when answering a question about his experience as a first time producer. I can just thank Luca again. Luca who's fatherly with me and guiding me in that process for the first time. I think the only or the biggest reason I could even claim that is the work that David and Luca and I did before the movie started and how much we worked on the script with Kemi's Blessing, the author of the book who's sitting right here, so thank you for that. Oh, that gave me the warm fuzzies. That day Dave and I went for a tiny walk back to Piazza San Marco where I briefly got to meet Jared Harris, who you may recall starred in the first season of The Terror, which Dave co-wrote and co-ran. Again, we took a photo that I would probably never see. What can you do? Anyway, Jared was very kind. He invited me to sit down for a coffee with them, but I had to get ready for the premiere. Here's me and Bernadette on our way to the Lido. My red carpet experience was overwhelming and kind of stressful. I am not good with crowds at the best of times, and in the COVID era, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. I just took deep breaths and kept reminding myself you know, you're feeling a lot of anxiety right now and also a lot of gratitude, so just focus on the gratitude. This was the best moment, of course. Mark was nearby, so I did ask him for a photo, which Bernadette took for us. Now I can say I was chilling with my villain. Oh, and check out my gorgeous custom green amethyst earrings from Amy Ambro. This is the most beautiful jewelry I have ever owned. Amy's links are in the notes below this video. It was such a joy to get to watch the film right next to Dave and 
squeeze each other's arms at our favorite moments. And of course, the standing ovation afterward was pretty epic. We ended up skipping the big fancy dinner afterward because Dave and Teresa and the other filmmakers had to be on a charter flight to the Telluride Film Festival at 2 a.m. And at this point, it was like 12.30. So we just went back to the hotel for a simple meal. And again, tummy was still not having it, so I just ordered a fruit salad. So around 1 a.m., I hugged everybody goodbye, went upstairs, and stayed up way too late because I was still jet-lagged and keyed up. I had decided not to read reviews, but I did make an exception for the Guardian review. In the morning, I met Francesca Resta for tea at the hotel, which was absolutely lovely. Francesca is an Italian illustrator living in London who got in touch after reading Bones and All. We took a water taxi to the train station and she and her partner Sandro and I took the train together and I got off at Padua. Now let me tell you how I decided on the rest of my itinerary. I wanted to travel for several days and return to Venice the following weekend to hang out with friends from Ireland and Austria and you'll meet them in a bit. Initially I thought I'd take a train and bus to this little town on Lake Garda that has a vegan restaurant. Why yes I absolutely do make travel plans based on where I can find the best food. And I figured I'd do some hiking in the area and stop off in Verona on the way back, but ultimately I decided that was too much. I've been traveling abroad, often solo, for more than half my life now. And my number one rule of thumb wherever I go is do not try to see too much. You'll enjoy yourself more if you choose fewer destinations and linger there, really get to know them. And of course, it's way more relaxing than if you were hopping back on the train or back in the rental car every day for another long trip to the next destination. And after all that excitement, like I said, I'm an introvert. What I really needed was to get quiet and decompress. So the new plan was Padua to see Giotto's Gravini Chapel, which my friend Henry Martin had recommended. Then down to Arca Petrarca, Petrarch's adopted hometown in the Euganian Hills where I could chill all I wanted in this infinity pool at my guest house, and then back to Venice for my last few nights. I had a wonderful quiet evening in Padua, going into churches, lighting candles for my mother, and savoring my absolute favorite meal of this entire trip, a mushroom cutlet at a restaurant called Viganda. I cried eating this meal, it was so good. My server, who I'm guessing is one of the owners, told me it's made with mashed potato as well as vital wheat gluten, so I may try to recreate this at some point. The potatoes were cooked exactly how my grandmother used to make them, having learned from her Italian sisters-in-law, so I guess it was the nostalgia making me weepy too. In Padua, there is also a September 11th memorial that I found both moving and dazzling because I happened to be passing over the bridge at the perfect time of evening. When I got back to the hotel, it was super exciting to see all those tweets coming in from the critics at Telluride. The next morning I went to the Scrivania Chapel, which I do think is an essential site for art history buffs such as myself. Because it was Sunday, there were no buses to Arca Petrarca, so I had to take a taxi. My driver got a bit turned around, even though I was giving him directions given to me by the guest house, so I think I spent more time in that taxi than I did on either train trip, but he was very kind and friendly, and so I was able to practice my Italian. While we are on the subject of practicing Italian, can I just tell you how annoying it is when Duolingo gets carnesty? I took a screenshot every time it happened, and I have many screenshots. I see other vegans complaining in the comments, and as far as I know, they haven't come up with a way to opt out. Props for including these ones, at least. I am gonna try a different language learning app, so if you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. I would appreciate that. This is not why I gave up on Duolingo. I just think the gamification is only fun to a point. I got sick of the demotion threats. It's, that's, that's stressful, who needs that? Anywho, Arca Petrarca was everything I was hoping for. Quiet and very atmospheric. I highly, highly recommend this guest house, Borgo Petrarca. Julia is so warm and welcoming and she was super patient with me too. I was really proud that I was able to speak in Italian for like about 75% of our conversations. I recorded a quick festival recap from the patio, so if you haven't seen that one yet, I will link it above. Dinner my first night in Arca Petrarca was not ideal. <laughs> the waiter initially told me he understood veganism and wouldn't serve me anything with milk or cheese or eggs, but it soon became apparent that he did not understand. Then, hilariously enough, a young couple sits down next to me and the woman says to the same waiter, Io sono vegana, 
vorrei una cena senza carne, senza latte, senza formaggio, senza uova. And <laughs> the waiter was like, I can't do this. So he brought the owner out who then was like super knowledgeable. <laughs> and I'm like, it was too late for me. They had already given me food that was vegan, but not very good. <laughs> Fortunately, the guys at Maxi Bar up the street know how to do the perfect simple vegan breakfast with plenty of fruit, a soy cappuccino, and vegan biscotti. Dinner-wise, I stuck with pizza and roasted veggie plates after that. You will notice that the pizza is essentially the roasted veggie plate on a pizza, which is fine by me. I spent my three days here swimming and reading by the pool, going on an easy hike, and visiting Petrarch's house. Arca Petrarca was the absolute perfect place to unwind. Okay, so a vegan restaurant is the only thing that would have made it actually perfect. And I am already dreaming about my next visit. Eventually it was time to head back to Venice and because I told Julia I was watching my cash, she said, well, you can always walk to the nearest train station, it's only 40 minutes, as opposed to spending my cash on a taxi. So that is what I did. I call for a taxi and I can have an adventure. felt totally gleeful the whole walk to Manceliche because this was so something my sister and I would have done back in the day. <laughs> a German couple I'd met at the guest house stopped their car and offered me a ride and I'm sure they thought that I was nuts for saying no thank you. Not quite as romantic as I was expecting. I need it. There's the train. The train bridge is down there. As you can imagine, it was tricky finding accommodation during the Biennale, so I opted for a room at the hotel on Isola San Servolo. The Vaporetto runs every 15 minutes, so it was actually a more convenient location than it sounds. I took the Vaporetto to the Lido, skirted around all the film festival stuff this time, and went for dinner at a restaurant called Buddha Soul, which was very good. I'm always up for Indian or Indian-inspired meals. And the next morning I met up with my dear friend Chantal, who is an Austrian author, who emailed me after reading Life Without Envy, and we've been friends ever since, though this was our first time meeting in person. Chantal has a series about a grumpy unicorn named Court, and she gave me a copy to give to my niece along with an English translation. Just was so sweet and so thoughtful. We went for lunch in Prosecco at Vigoloso. I may be mispronouncing that. It's off the tourist track, but worth the effort of taking a bus to get there. It felt odd eating sushi with forks, but no matter, it was delicious, as were our quiche and pasta dishes. After lunch, we passed a happy couple of hours at the Guggenheim, and then we were ready for an early dinner at this charming little bookstore and vegetarian cafe called Sola Luna. Simple sandwich and salad here, very fresh and flavorful. Ambling around Venice during the golden hour. Ah, it was perfect. After I saw Chantal off at the train station, I met up with my friend Henry Martin and a bunch of his pals from Dublin, London, who were all in town for the visual art extravaganza that is the Biennale. Henry's friend Romana had a piece in this exhibition called Planet B, Climate Change and the New Sublime. So after we rendezvoused at the gallery, we went out for drinks and I finally ordered myself an Aperol Spritz. When in Venice, etc. The next day we got a bit of a late start this cafe had great coffee and vegan pastries. Do they? Do yeah. they? Yeah. The swimming pool? Yeah. Does the chlorine not? Uh, no, we don't use chlorine. Oh, okay. We use like a filtering thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Catch. <laughs> Do you see the big goldfish? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The big goldfish. Yeah. 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 Ye
Shout outs to Vanessa and Vari and Brian and Romana and Will. I had such a lovely time with you all. Vari suggested we go to one of her favorite bars afterward, which happened to be a communist bar. So we walked into what felt like somebody's living room, circa 1971, and I got to say to the bartender, vorrei una birra siciliana, per favore. My nonna would have been so proud. Actually, he was a red wine kind of guy. But here's the best part. At 8.30, on a Saturday evening, the bartender decides that he's closing up, he's done for the night. And as we're getting up and getting ready to leave, he says to us very indignantly, Le bottiglie, le bottiglie. And it occurs to me that unlike capitalists, communists don't expect other people to pick up after them. I wanted to stay out longer, but I also didn't want to be a complete wreck on my way back to the airport in the morning, so I regretfully said my goodbyes. Apart from potato chips for breakfast, which, let's be honest, I could have ordered a second fruit cup, I ate well the whole way home. A multi-course feast in first class, so thanks again, Metro Golden Mayor. I was able to use WhatsApp on the flight, so my friends Megan and Mallory sent me the news about Taylor and Luca's awards. I mean, I'm... Sono davvero così felice di poter essere qui su questo palco. Moltissimi attori meravigliosi sono in questa sala e io sono qui insieme a Luca, il mio regista, che è proprio qui con me. Questo è satisfying feeling in the world. I often think about what Dave said to me on set about being the first link in a chain of creativity. And so it's so, so, so thrilling to get to watch Taylor getting so much praise and recognition for her incredible performance in this film. She really does deserve every superlative. Next up, film festivals and yummy vegan food in Iowa, New York City, and Los Angeles. Thank you. Yeah. I've already yeah. spent yeah. Jesus yeah. a couple yeah. days yeah. of the game. <laughs> 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 <laughs>